watching Capital Connection from the Illinois State Capitol. Welcome back. One of the groups pushing back against this proposal to uh, p reform police are prosecutors. One of them, a former state's attorney from Massac County, now a House Republican, Patrick Windhorst, joins us from his district office now in uh, Harrisburg, I believe you said. Is that right? That's correct, yes. Uh, good to have you with us. Uh, I, I want to get your analysis, first of all, on how this would impact a prosecutor's job. You, you've got a suspect accused of a violent crime, and they're behind bars. Usually right now, they, they have to go through a process to pay bail or, or to post bond there, and then they can get out awaiting their trial. Um, the argument from many who advocated for this is that a person's poverty or wealth really shouldn't play a role in whether or not they are a threat to society. And um, I, all prosecutors would agree with that statement. However, the changes that are made in this bill uh, go beyond poverty or wealth. Uh, they don't take into account adequately someone's dangerousness to the community or their recidivism before you're allowed to keep them in custody. You know, there is, as you've alluded to, a, a basically an in or out system that's been being created by this bill. But the way to keep someone behind bars prior to trial is under limited circumstances. It isn't just a dangerousness uh, determination. There actually has to be a, a certain offense that's met for someone to be held behind bar. For example, so I, I know that one of the Republican complaints in the waning hours of the lame duck session was that this bill was 700 pages. You only had those few hours to really comb through and analyze. Yes, there was uh, months of committee hearings. There were months of committee hearings, but the, the final language was presented in those last few hours. We've had a few weeks now as you've been able to go, go through and comb through that language, are there surprises in there? Are there things uh, that, that showed up that you just weren't expecting? Well, there were definitely some things, particularly when we deal with uh, the elimination of cash bail that uh, are concerning. Uh, you know, we talk about certain offenses. Yes, very serious offenses, such as first degree murder, a person can be held for uh, prior to trial, but an offense such as burglary, a person cannot be held prior to trial for. Uh, under the way the statute or the bill is, is not, not even if a judge in their discretion decides the person might be a danger that judge cannot override that that's correct uh there are a list of I believe seven items that uh, state what a judge what offenses a judge can hold someone for the first one is forcible felonies for which a person cannot receive a sentence of probation well burglary you can receive a sentence of probation so even though burglary is a forcible felony, because you, uh, uh, the defendant could receive probation, that is not an offense for that fits under that category. And then the others are more narrowly tailored, such as domestic battery, violations of order protection, sex offenses. There is a catch-all at the end for willful flight if the defendant is someone who is uh, likely to flee the jurisdiction, but that requires a specific finding, and you can't even use just prior failures to appear in court as a basis for willful flight. So that's a difficult standard to meet. I guess what I'm asking is, you, you mentioned that someone who commits a burglary uh, would be immediately let out without having to post bond, without, uh, and I, I wonder if you see that leading to an increase in burglaries. Yes, I mean, I, people, being human nature, people figure out what is gonna get them a punishment versus what is not gonna get them a punishment. No, this doesn't just give them a free pass. They still have to eventually show up before a judge and face uh, face the court. Yes, but in, in many jurisdictions, that trial is going to occur a year, year and a half, two years later. And what that means is, is just human nature, the longer you, you receive a punishment from when you commit an act, the less impact it makes on you deterring you from committing that act in the future. It's just human nature and deterrence. All right. Well, we, we appreciate your perspective as a prosecutor on this matter of crime and law and in the courts, certainly. But before we let you go, uh, I wonder how you uh, see this return to school, return to sports uh, effort that is happening now as Illinois is starting to reopen. Once again, we've been down this road before. Uh, how do you view this, this effort to reopen the economy and uh, where do things stand from, from your perspective? Well, in, in my area, uh, most of the schools have been open this entire time. Some have used a hybrid schedule with half remote, half half in person, but a lot of schools have been going full time as if uh, there has, has been uh, no pandemic. In fact, have been able to operate uh, apparently quite well. As it relates to sports, 
you know, our my district borders Kentucky, Missouri, and Indiana. The, the kids are actually going out of state and playing sports. So it, it, by not involving the school, but not having the supervision of the school, it was actually, I believe, making potentially the situation worse because they were going to play sports where there were a lot of spectators and could create problems with uh, potentially the spread of the virus. So I believe that now having the schools uh, allow for sports, having the schools open is a positive. I believe among the top 10 uh, counties with the lowest rate of population vaccinated in Illinois right now, three or four of them are, if not in your district, in your area, in, in, in your part of Southern Illinois. Why is that? I think uh, part of it, it goes to the, the state's response, getting the uh, both the information and the vaccines uh, to the local health departments. A lot of the health departments in our area cover multiple counties, uh, so the infrastructure there isn't as fast as it might be where we have a larger county with one health department. So there are some infrastructure things that exist. There's also been the state's response uh, to the pandemic, I think, has created an issue. All right, very interesting. Representative Patrick Windhorst, I believe your first time with us here on Capital Connection. Uh, look forward to having you back, and thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. We're back in just a moment with the response from House Democrat, the, spill, the bill sponsor, Justin Slaughter, uh, who pushed the criminal justice reform bill, uh, the police reform bill, through during the lame duck session. He joins us next. Stick around.